Hello YouTube. Hi friends. Um, this is Russell Garcia and I'm doing another installment of my blog. We're gonna bring it back, <laughs> see where this goes. And um, I got about nine days till my exam and I'm gonna shoot this video and let you know a little bit about what I've been doing and where I'm at. Okay, so first off, I'm a little naive to the iPad, but since I've got my iPad, I've been using using it a lot. There are a ton of really nice apps to study for the USMLE. Uh, one of them is by a company called Virtual Note Cards, and I really like their app. That might not be the right one, but I'll I'll update you guys later. But um, it's Pathology USMLE app or whatever. <laughs> Another one I was using, and it's just kind of a a run through. I know they say buzzwords are not very good for the USMLE, but you have to know them and the variations of them. So uh, I have an app that I use is called Buzzwords. Um, another app that I've been using is called Anki, A-N-K-I, and that one's really nice. It allows you to make flashcards and it keeps you from studying things that you already know, which is nice. So when you're going through the flashcards, you see something that you know, you can mark it in one of three ways. You can say, hey, I already know this. I'm going to send it far into the future. Don't ever show this to me until I'm, you know, a month down the road or two months down the road. I got this cold. And then there's also a function where it says, oh, I don't got this, but I'd like to move on. So you set that like five minutes into the future or ten minutes or maybe tomorrow, you know, so that's really nice. Um, not really reading through first aid like I used to anymore. I'm just kind of using it as a as a reference now. I finished with UWorld, all the questions. I got about, I don't know, 50, 55 uh, percent of the questions right. The ones that I got wrong, I'm, I don't know. If I set up a quiz and I do those, I get kind of discouraged because I get the majority of them wrong, but Lately I've been getting about 40% of them right, which is nice, because if I get 40% of the questions I get right, I mean, I get wrong, right, <laughs> that means that um, I'm learning something new and I'm, I'm making some improvements. Um, so I'm doing that, and uh, my subscription's about to end to UWorld. So today I'm going to be doing NB an NBME 17, uh, Form 17, the timed uh, non-feedback version and I, I don't recommend getting the one with feedback. The feedback really doesn't help. It's, it's not it's not really good. Um, there's nothing there for you. But um, like they say on the website, it's not for um, it's not for telling you what score you're gonna get, it's for telling you what areas you need to work on which is nice for me because you know I could just go zap into that area and work on it and uh, patch that up but you'll never really know everything that you need to know. But like I said in my last videos, you got to know the basics. You have to know as many mnemonics as possible, and the context in which to use them. So the mnemonics are just not enough. You have to use the context uh, with the mnemonics and remember where you use them. Another thing I've been doing is I've been drawing a lot of diagrams uh, without words on them and numbering them, kind of like a paint by numbers, except for where the numbers are at, the number feeds back to a label. So labeling the brainstem, I don't know if you guys seen that picture that I posted on uh, Google Plus, but um, I have a picture of the brainstem that's kind of a paint by numbers. And I draw it with circles and sticks and just, you know, images that stick in my head. Because usually like images like squares, circles, um, patterns, things like that, they really stick in my head really well. So I can remember a lot of information altogether. If I can remember the picture, then I can remember everything associated with it. And it's not necessarily a picture. It's like a diagram of just like circles, squares, and dots. That's all it is. I used it for my gram-positive algorithm, my gram-negative algorithm. I used it for my brain stem. Um, I used it for a couple other cross-sections of the brain. Um, what else did I use it for? I um, can't be sure right now, but... Um, running a little over on this video. What else do I want to tell you? Um, yeah, I'm nervous. 
um, very nervous. Um, um, little advice: don't at this at this point. If you ever make it to this point, don't don't try to find any new resources. Um, just stick with the ones that you've been working with and try to solidify the stuff that you do know. That way, you go into the exam knowing what you already know and not obscuring it with uh, new facts or new things. And I read in Kaplan, uh, in their in their textbook, their, I don't remember what it's called, it's like their version of first stage, Metacentials, and Metacentials. I read in that that you have to focus more on learning uh, big picture things, because if you memorize a lot of uh, a lot of details, and you're like, oh yeah, I got that detail. If they ask me a question about that detail, I'm gonna nail it. But you know what? They not they're not gonna ask you a question about the detail. They're gonna ask you something else, maybe a wrong answer choice. They're gonna ask you about. So say you were looking at a U-world question. They're gonna ask you about a wrong answer choice that was on a U-world question that you knew. So um, you don't want to pass those up, especially on the questions that you got right. And you got to believe that the USMLE uh, exam writers are also looking at U World stats. So if it's a question where a lot of people got that right and you got that wrong, you'd better make sure you understand that particular question because that question is probably going to end up on the exam or that concept. So I would focus on that a lot. Make sure you got it down. Um, some people are asking, you know, how do you keep motivated and you don't get discouraged. Um, I'd say I keep I keep switching it up. Like I'll switch to a different format. I'll I'll use the computer based uh, quizzing. I've been listening to Golgen Audio and if you haven't listened to that yet, that's essential. That's absolutely essential. People will poo poo it online, but if you're a guy like me coming from where I come from where you know you didn't get a lot of you know, education uh, shoved down your throat when you were when you were little, or you really didn't care too much to you know use your brain too much to to learn a lot until you graduated high school. <laughs> then then you're like, oh yeah, I want to go to college. Um, then you probably want to listen to that because he puts a lot of things together, and there's only one way to do that and that's to have a lifetime of experience and a lifetime of studying and I really I really give it up to these uh, these international students that I study with because I, I know that you know this isn't their first walk walk through the park I know that they're studying every day I know that when they were small their parents were pushing them pushing them pushing them pushing them and you know not, nothing against my parents you know I'm very cultured and you know I excel in a lot of things that people from other countries might not excel with because I have, a, you know, kind of a well-rounded view of, uh, of social issues and I guess, you know, I, uh, I make really good mnemonics because I, I have so many nonsensical things that I can attach <laughs> to, uh, to the data. But uh, I really, I really admire these people from other countries that, that come in and, and uh, become doctors. They're really dedicated people and their parents are really dedicated parents. And uh, I'll just tell you a little story. So uh, when I was in when I was in St. Kitts, my neighbor living above me. Um, one day I was studying in my in my room and I heard like some banging, like you know like a fight, like somebody was like banging. There was you know like they say they were moving furniture, <laughs> you know basically, you know they trying to cover it up. But uh, the dad was basically um, beating the child, and he was hitting, punching, kicking. You know, this kid is getting messed up, and it wasn't. It wasn't for five minutes. It wasn't for four minutes. It wasn't a minute. It was like for a good thirty, thirty minutes to forty-five minutes of a beatdown and a lecture. It was that bad. Um, so. I know that you know, a lot of people might say that's wrong, but you know that's just our culture. But in other in other countries, it's it's mandatory to excel at school because the parents are poor, and parents have to work, and they um, when you're working for you know twenty thirty bucks a week, 
<laughs> and uh, you're eating beans and rice and there's bugs in the house and it's so hot that you just can't stop sweating. Your clothes, your clothes don't dry in the dryer because it's so humid and you know, you just don't have all these luxuries <laughs> that you have in the United States. But uh, when it's like that, you know, you want to make sure your kids are doing well in school, given that you have to pay, you have to pay for your kids to go to school to dress them and all of that that goes along with it. School supplies are, you know, very expensive and they make them last over over there. And I, I'm pretty sure that it that can be uh, said about other countries too. But they take they take education very seriously over there, and I think that. That's a lesson that, you know, I could learn from. And, uh, you know, a few other people can learn from that. And, you know, take from it what you will. But um, I really admire them. And, you know, I see nothing wrong with, you know, a little tough love to to make sure your kid has a good future and make, make sure your family is well taken care of. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> well, but sorry to get so preachy on you guys, but... uh Hopefully, hopefully that will lead to some comments in the in the bottom, or maybe a subscription, or maybe a dislike for this one, or a like. I don't know. <laughs> I'm you, I'm new to YouTube, but I really like YouTube, and uh, I hope all my future employers watch this because I want them to know who I am, and I don't want them to hire someone they don't really understand what they're getting into. So I know all the lawyers are like, oh, you know, you shouldn't do things on social media. You know, because you don't want anybody to know who you are. You know, you want you want them to know, you know, what what a cookie cutter package is. But <laughs> not me. It's hard to shut me up. I'll probably stick my foot in my mouth, you know, two, three, four times a day. And you know, if I'm just being me, I'm just being me, and I'm just trying to be the best me that I can be. And I hope, you know, maybe some of my professors watch this and they're like, wow that kids should be studying. <laughs> but uh I hope I can make you guys proud and you know make myself proud and get this get this degree and move on and lead a, live a really good life and take care of my family and take care of my friends when they're down and you know try to help people in, in, in their worst moments you know at the hospital and I've seen that happen and you know I've did a little studying on a few things and I'm like, well, may, hey, maybe I could have done that a little different, you know. Maybe they could have lived a little longer, you know. Stuff like that that really um, yanks on your heartstrings and makes you want to study really hard, especially when you've lost someone or something like that. So, Or one of your good friends has lost someone and you see them suffering, you know. That extra hour or so of studying is totally worth it when you can give them the right drug to bring them around and, you know, stabilize them. But, again, I'm getting preachy. <laughs> kind of hard to uh, avoid in medicine, but um, I'm going to have some fun with it. I'm going to take this exam. I'll, uh, this is a practice exam online. And then I'm taking my real exam on the 26th, so wish me luck. <laughs> Maybe thumbs up for that. <laughs> And uh, let me know what you think. I'll uh, talk to you guys later. And um, oh, by the way, try to use Google Plus more. It's a really good service. And uh, I'm on there. Give me a call. It's a face-to-face -face thing. It's not. It's not hidden like Facebook, which is <laughs> kind of weird, a weird phenomenon. But that's that's all for another video. But uh, try out Google Plus if you if you get a moment. And uh, if you do, find me on there. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.